The words upset and underdog are thrown around in vain these days. Teams and athletes with the slightest of disadvantages are hailed as true underdogs and overachievers in a world where tens of thousands of matches and games happen on an annual basis. Leicester City winning the Premier League title, an underdog story. 1980 men's US hockey team beating Soviet Union at the Winter Olympics, an underdog story. Ranked at 125, Goran Ivanisevic winning the 2001 Wimbledon, an underdog story. Average Joe's Gymnasium beating Globo Gym to win the Las Vegas Dodgeball Tournament, a true underdog story. Beating the odds is nothing new in sports and is done almost every day. Every team and athlete has a compelling story to tell, but very few can tell a story like Rulon Gardner. Greco-Roman wrestling is not for the weak of heart. It's contested by some of the biggest, toughest and scariest men on the planet. And the biggest, toughest and scariest warriors of all can be found competing in the super heavyweight division. Alexander Kolchiski, Jeff Blatnik, Kasan Barov, Mian Lopez are some of the elite super heavyweights to have stood atop the peak of Greco-Roman wrestling. And then there is Alexandra Carolyn. It was domination like never seen before or since. The most historic run of victories and championships. The sheer force of nature that was the unstoppable force and the immovable object all rolled into one. You can learn a lot about a man from the nicknames his peers bestow upon him. The Russian Bear, Russian King Kong, Alexander the Great and The Experiment. You don't just get those names, you earn them through a lot of work and winning. And nobody knew winning like Alexander Carolyn. Heading into the 2000 Olympic Games Finals, Carolyn was built like a juggernaut at 6'3 and weighing 130 kilograms. His career record read 887 wins and just one loss. 12 consecutive European Championships, 9 consecutive World Championships, and gold medals at the past three Olympic Games in Seoul, Barcelona and Atlanta, where he suffered a chest injury in the final and essentially won the gold medal one-handed. Carolyn hadn't lost a bout in 13 years. Nobody had even scored a solitary point against him in seven years. His peers, the big, bad, tough wrestlers across the world were terrified of facing him. Everyone had lost against him at some point. Most of them had lost the fight before they even stepped onto the mat. Carolyn had one particular move that not only put him on a league of his own, it quite possibly placed him in a universe of his own making, where every outlier and potential invader was thwarted off before they could even think of entering his domain. Reverse body lifts are unheard of in the super heavyweight division. Only a handful of men have the potential strength to execute one of them. For Carolyn, they were his trademark go-to move. He would put wrestlers in their place with a beautiful yet game-ending reverse lift. Carolyn was not only a physical specimen, but he was also a wrestling genius. His sports science PhD included a thesis on how to defend against the suplex. He was the smartest, strongest and most technically adept wrestler on the planet for well over a decade. Rulong Gardner on the other hand came from more humble beginnings. A dairy farmer from Wyoming, the then 29 year old Rulong basically had little to none pedigree at the international level. He was not touted as the next great thing in wrestling. He had not achieved much success outside of America, where he had won the US Championships in 95 and 97. But what he lacked in wrestling IQ and technical prowess, he made up for through brute strength and endurance. Working on the farm, apart from typical farmyard chores, Rulon loved to wrestle with cows. Rulon wrestled with actual cows, the milk-giving kind. He'd grapple and lift with cows to build his endurance, and over time built enough strength to deal with moving objects that weighed well over a thousand pounds. And Rulon would need to dig deep into his reserve of strength in his gold medal match with Carolyn at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. This match was expected to be the grand farewell that Carolyn deserved. He was set to retire after this match and to lend the 18 years at the helm. The crowd had gathered to see the greatest wrestler grapple on the mat for one last time. Even IOC President Juan Antonio Samaranch was among the spectators, expecting to walk down to the ramp and present Carolyn with his fourth consecutive Olympic gold. Greco-Roman wrestling matches are contested over two periods of three minutes each. If the scores are level or a point apart, the bout goes into a three-minute overtime period. Early in the first period, it didn't take long for Carolyn's first attempt at launching a reverse lift. But Gardner was a huge specimen, and Gardner had endurance, 
Alexander the Great couldn't get him off the floor. And although this didn't mean much to the crowd at the time, Carolyn knew something was wrong. He was putting in all his strength, but Rulon wouldn't move. The first period finished with scores level 0 and 0. The second period would begin in a clinch, and Carolyn would win the flip to get the lock first. But it wasn't easy locking onto Rulon's 54 inch chest. It was a hard lock to make, but a tight lock when made. Rulon, on the other hand, had issues locking in as his hands would slide around Carolyn. And just as it seemed like Rulon would break his lock, the unthinkable happened. Carolyn had released his lock. Officials reviewed the move and due to recent changes in rules, his lock break cost him a point and Rulon now read the Russian Mastodon 1-0. The crowd didn't erupt with joy. Team USA didn't celebrate. They knew this was Carolyn's universe. It was only a matter of time before Carolyn leveled the tally and took back what is rightfully his. The second period ended with Rulon ahead 1-0. The match went into a 3 minute overtime and Carolyn's chance came as Gardner took the parterre position. The stage was set for Carolyn's famous reverse lift. Only problem was, Gardner wouldn't budge. No matter how hard Carolyn tried, he couldn't move Gardner's feet and lift his body. Suddenly, Carolyn looked very human. For the first time in 13 years, Carolyn looked tired and beatable. And as the final seconds ran out on overtime, Carolyn knew his time at the top had come to an end. Rulon Gardner had just beaten the greatest wrestler who ever lived. Farmed by Rulon, Team USA and the crowd could not believe what they had just witnessed. As Carolyn departed the stage, he left his shoes on the mat, a symbol of his immediate retirement from the sport. Gardner would go on to enjoy some fame back home in the States and would return to the 2004 Olympic Games, winning the bronze under the tutelage of the very man he beat four years ago to win gold. Both Carolyn and Rulon's lives would go in very different directions. Carolyn, despite the loss in his final match, was revered around Russia and the global wrestling community as the greatest to have done it. Russia would bestow the highest honors upon Carolyn as he prepared to enter politics in his home country. Rulon would never reach those heights again. A snowmobile accident, air crash, bankruptcy and obesity would lead to his decline both financially and physically. But no matter what lies ahead in Rulon Gardner's future, that day in Sydney will be etched into the minds of the audience. Rulon had overcome 2,000 to 1 odds. Rulon had taken down the Russian bear. And that gold medal in Sydney is something no one can ever take away from the farmer from Wyoming, Rulon Gardner. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more sports content. In the meantime, Click on these thumbnails to check out our other videos. Hope you have a great day ahead.